So this is another example for uh, natural deduction in predicate logic. So here we have used all the rules. I think almost will be using uh, for all x elimination, there exists x elimination, there exists x insertion, and we'll see. Okay. So first, uh, let us start with the premises. I'll just write on their premises first. For all x, first step, p of x implies q of x. So this is your first premise. And second premise is there exists an x of p of x. So these two are your premises. And uh, <clears throat> first, when you want to break this, okay, for all of for all x, we need to uh, actually substitute, make a substitution for this variable, right? So if this x actually works for all, this uh, proportional logic statement works for all x, then surely it works for a term. So I'll start with the x naught as a term as an assumption. Always it's better to take a term and then we'll go for the substitution. Okay, I'm going to talk, take this x naught as a term in the proportional logic statement. And uh, if, if the formula actually works for all, then surely it will works for your term x naught. Okay, I'm going to make a substitution of wherever you have x as x naught. So this is your breaking of r for all x elimination. For all x, if the formula works, then for sure you can substitute a term instead of this x. So this is your for all x elimination. And uh, this is easier one way to, uh, when it just works for all, you can eliminate it. But here is a category where you have a there exist criteria. So there exist cannot be eliminated just like that, right? So how does the that exist works? We start with the term x naught. So x naught is already defined over here. And we start with the proportional logic statement where you want to make this breaking. So I want to break the statement. So instead of x, I'm just going to take p of x naught as an assumption. And based on the assumption, I'm going to derive, a term, derive to a term. And what does this term actually need to be derived? I want to derive to this conclusion. If I'm able to derive to the conclusion, then it is well and good. Okay, so this is how it actually works. <clears throat> so your conclusion should be derived out of this one. Now the sixth step is, I have P of X implies Q of X and P of X is given. So by implies elimination of not normal uh, predicate logic statement, by implies elimination of 4 comma 5, we can write the statement as Q of X naught. And uh, when Q of X naught is done, by using your, uh, for uh, there exists an X insertion. For one term, if your predicate logic formula satisfied, if your pi satisfied, we can write it as, for there exists an X, where your formula Q of X actually satisfied. Okay, so this is your there exists insertion. Okay, so now what happened? We started with a term X naught with, the given, like where you want to break your uh, proportional uh, the, for exist condition. So this is the place where you want to break this, where you have decided to break this proportional logic statement. <clears throat> and starting from this term, you are able to derive to this term. Okay, so with that, we can conclude that your solution, your conclusion, what we have achieved is, is your for all x elimination from statement two, and three, and from starting with uh, the derivation of phi to seven, we are able to go this term. We are able to derive to this term. We cannot stop it at this place itself. Since we have make an assumption, we have to conclude it appropriately. Okay, and the assumption is actually made to break this that existent x. Okay, so I'll repeat the solution again. First of all, we have to try this uh, premises, whatever premises we have given, we have written it. And uh, everything is going to start up with a term. Like when you want to go with an R elimination, oh, sorry, or there exists an elimination or there exists an insertion for all insertion for all elimination, for all quantifier, natural deduction, you're going to focus on a single term. So I'm just going to consider that X naught is the term that we are going to consider for our work. Okay. And if this formula actually works for all quantifier, then surely when the X is substituted with the X naught, your formula will work. Okay, so I'm just going to eliminate this for all X and I'm going to substitute X naught instead of X. So I can write the statement as P of X naught implies Q of X naught. So the quantifier is breaked over here and this is your first term. And the second term is actually bounded with 
dire exist of x. It is not easy to eliminate this dire exist of x. When you want to eliminate this dire exist of x, we have to start with the term and a formula into that term. And that finally, we derive to certain conditions. So here, this is a formula where I'm going to break this that exist of x. So I'm just going to substitute x naught instead of x. And I'm going to consider that as an assumption, p of x naught. And with that, I'm going to derive to the conclusion that exist. Okay. <clears throat> so now I have started with x naught and p of x naught. And I'm able to derive that exist x q of x. Okay. So with that, I can finally conclude it. And this, por this portion is actually your normal implies elimination condition. How you are going to do it in your uh, proportional logic. We have P of X naught implies Q of X naught and P of X naught is given. So with that, we can conclude Q of X naught. And for one term, if your Q of X naught satisfied, then you can write the statement as there exists an X. At least for one term, we can write it as there exists of X. And when it is satisfying for all possible X, then you can write it as for all X. Okay, so you should know the meaning of the quantifier to understand this detection process easier. Thank you.